Well, good evening, everybody. We're glad you're here at church, and we're glad to have the people in on Facebook, YouTube. Galatians 5 is actually the chapter for tomorrow. Four is for today. I didn't preach on, I preached on three this morning and five tonight. Chapter 5, Liberty Threatened by Legalism. That's the title of my chapter in, in my large print Bible. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, that was a, a, a Jewish tradition that on the eighth day the males were circumcised. It was part of the law. You were circumcised on the eighth day. But in the New Testament, we're not under the law. We have no of the old law. Behold, I say to Paul, if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. So if, so if you want to be a law keeper, you got to do it all. Every single one. I mean, uh, you know how many rules there are? in the Old Testament uh, law, thousands. Not 10 commandments, not 50, but actually thousands of commandments. So unless you get them all, forget it. Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever you is justified by the law. Ye are fallen from grace. So either you're going to be saved by grace or the law. You're going to keep a thousand commandments and obey every one of them, if you want to work your way to heaven, which if, if you could keep them all, you could go to heaven by doing that. But you can't. It's impossible because we're all sinners. For we through the Spirit, capital S, Holy Ghost, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. So again, remember faith. We're saved by faith. We're justified by faith. We live by faith. And of course, it said in our reading this morning in chapter 3, the just shall live by faith. Those exact words are repeated three times in the Bible. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. So, anybody on this earth that you're going to be saved is going to be by faith. You don't have to be a Jew to be saved. You can be Jews or Gentiles. It doesn't, make any who you, it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from. You get saved by faith. Verse 7, chapter 5. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Leaven is always the, the picture of sin in the Bible. Sin is leaven. It's, it's, uh, whenever, whenever God talks about sin in regards to our, our activities in that, um, it's, it's called leaven. I have confidence, verse 10, in you that through the Lord that ye will uh, be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. Verse 11. And I, brethren, if I yet preach, when he says brethren, he's writing to the church at Galatia. That's, that's saved people, church. And I, brethren, verse 11, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. And then we're going to get into liberty divine. What what is what is liberty? Verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Liberty is freedom. It means there's there's no bondage of having to do anything to be saved. Only believe by faith. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. It means don't live in sin, because then you're using liberty and you, you just, you're sinning, but you ain't supposed to. Because by faith you don't have to sin. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Love covers everything. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, who served believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
Verse 15. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, capital S, that's the Holy Spirit, who lives within us. Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17. This is a big deal now, because this is what we all battle every day. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, Holy Spirit, capital S, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another. So the flesh, the deeds of the flesh, this wickedness, are against the Holy Spirit of God or God's way. So that you cannot do the thing that you would. Romans chapter 7 tells about Paul and the battle he had, like we all have, against the flesh and the spirit. But if ye be led of the spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Here it is. Here's what our flesh can do for us when we don't walk in the spirit. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Those are all sexual sins. Verse 20. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. 21. Envying, envies, murders, drunkenness, revealings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So that, that's the way lost people live, in the flesh. And saved people can too if we backslide. But the fruit of the Spirit, now, now here's the spiritual, this is, what, this is what Christians are supposed to live. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. For if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. So 26 verses, we read through them pretty quick. But it's, it's the great battle of a Christian between the flesh and the Spirit. Let's just turn to Romans 7 uh, and see what Paul said about it in his own life. Go back uh, after 2 Corinthians is Romans. Huh? Romans what? Seven. seven. Yeah, Romans seven. Right after Second Corinthians. Uh, right before, I'm sorry. It's, it's right after the book of Acts, Romans seven. Okay. Romans seven. Know ye not, brethren, it's brothers and sisters in Christ, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then if while her husband liveth, she is married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is freed from that law so that she is uh, no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, Lord Jesus Christ, that we should bring forth fruits unto God. Verse 5. For when ye were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which for by the law did work in your members, to bring forth fruit unto death. Verse 6. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit. That's a small s. That's our spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit. That's our there's small s is our spirit, capital S is Holy Spirit. And not in the oldest of the letter. 
You see, our spirit has to be yielded to the Holy Spirit. Do you know what rules our life? Uh, do you know what we follow? Our spirit. My spirit rules my life. Your spirit, meant it, it rules your life. And uh, my, my spirit's going to rule my life. The Holy Spirit can't unless I yield to him. My spirit has to be yielded to God, to the Holy Spirit, and then my spirit will do the right thing. But if my spirit isn't dedicated and yielded to God, the Holy Spirit, then I'm gonna fail. I'm, I'm, I'm on all them things I read about adultery, fornication, all that different stuff, all them sexual sins, and on and on, and hatred, and variance, emulations, and all that. If I just go by my spirit, I'm gonna, that's what I'm. Gonna, that's how I'm gonna live. But if my spirit, which will control my life, is is yielded to the Holy Ghost, to the Holy Spirit, and, and we let the Holy Ghost control our spirit, then we then we do good. This is Paul talking now. So listen, what are you going to say? But now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, our spirit, newness of our spirit, capital a little s, and not in the oldness of the letter. It's the law. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, verse 8, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. So the, the, the law tells us we're sinners. And that's what it tells us. We, it says, don't do this. And what do we do? We did it. We did it. You know, what it lied, whatever, whatever the sin may be. Thousands of sins. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, Sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life I found to be unto death. Verse 10. Verse 11. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, by it slew me. Verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. So the law is good. And we can keep the law if we, if we yield our spirit to God's Holy Spirit. Then we can keep the law was then that which is good made death unto me god forbid but sin that it might appear sin worketh death in me by that which is good that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful for we know that the law is spiritual but i am carnal so the law is spiritual and we can abide by it if we if we let the holy spirit take over our spirit for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Verse 15. For that which I do I allow not, for what I would that I do not, but what I hate that do I. That happens to me. Does it happen to you too sometimes? You know what you should do, but you sin. What You do what you hate because our spirit is ruling us and the Holy Spirit isn't. That's how, and Paul had the same, the great apostle Paul, he had the same difficulties that, that you and I have in prison out there in Facebook. For then I do that which I would not, I consent that the law, that it is good. Verse 17, now then it is not no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Verse 18, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, so forget it, it's in your flesh, dwelleth no good thing for the will present with me but how to perform that which is good i find not for the good that i would i do not but the evil which i would not do that i do boy that happens to me it's happened to you too it happens to everybody i mean we know it's wrong why did i do that because i'm a flesh i won't yield to the spirit now if i do that i would not it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So it's sin that dwells in us. I find in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Verse 22. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So in our heart and in our mind, we know what's right to do and we want to do it, but we don't. Because we walk in the flesh and not in the spirit. And shame on us. Paul was the same way. 
But I see another law in me, my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Verse 24. Oh, wretched man that I am. That was Paul and you and me. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So we're in a battle every day, amen. I know I am. I think you must know it too. And then we just do in one verse in the eighth chapter. This is, this is the victory. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So like Paul, like you and I, if we walk after the spirit and yield to the, we yield our spirit to the Holy Spirit, we can live right and do right. That's a wonderful thing. We try to walk in the flesh, we, we fail and we backslide. We all do it sometime, but we don't have to live that way. We, we don't have to walk, we can walk after the spirit. So that, that's fifth chapter, Galatians, and it's backed up strongly by Paul's testimony in uh, Romans chapter seven. So. Short and sweet, but it's the truth. And it's what we have to do. A, a lot of people say, oh no, Paul, no, yeah, Paul was just like you and I. He could walk in the flesh and he could fail in sin. David, the man after God's own heart, he did it and he did some horrible sins. David, the man after God's own heart. So we need to walk in the spirit, Holy Spirit, and will not fulfill the lust and desire. And hey, we all got battles every day. We don't have the same battles, but we got battles, and it's a battle between the sin or the flesh and the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. So, amen. Let's pray, Lord. Thank you now. Short message, but truth, and it'll help us. We pray if there's anybody out there in Facebook today and YouTube or whatever that's not saved. I believe anybody that's saved knows they're saved. I know I'm saved. I believe anybody, if, you, if, you, if you're really saved, you know it. If you know you're not and God's speaking to you, once get saved today. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you're saved, I believe you'll know it. If you're not, you need to get saved. Quit rebelling against God. Listen and repent and be saved today. You know if you're saved or not. If you're not, why don't you pray the sinner's prayer and get saved right now. This is the prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood on Calvary's cross and rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Amen. Amen. Well, church and Facebook and YouTube, uh, we've had the service tonight. I hope we can think about it and rethink it and read it over again. Galatians 5 and Romans 7. Read it again. Yeah. Who is this watching? Oh, okay. Uh, is... Is is John's last name Finelli? No. To someone else. Different John. Because the other day made Kate is Joel. I don't know these people. John and Joel Finelli are watching. God bless you, John and Joel. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for coming, church. Thanks for coming. God bless you.